Hi guys, or welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about 14 habits that you need to learn as a beginner sewer. When we start to sew, most of us are not going to classes to do it. We are watching YouTube tutorials, we're finding blog posts on the internet to make our way through the process of learning to sew. When we do that, it can be really easy to pick up bad habits or even worse, develop our own habits that we don't know uh, going against us. It's like pushing against the tide. It's gonna make us take a lot longer to get proficient at our sewing. So if you listen to these tips and take them on board, then you are gonna be in a much better position to have really good garments much quicker. I've got the list here that in no particular order, but the first one I've got for you is to tidy as you sew. Now, while this is not gonna impact your sewing directly in that it's not gonna make your stitches better, etc., what it is gonna do is give you the ability to concentrate on the task that you're at. And in that way, you're less likely to make mistakes. I know when I began sewing, I was the messiest person in the world. I mean, if you watched me at the beginning of my channel, you would have known that. And over the years, as I've gotten into decluttering and taking control of my home, I've become much tidier and that is rolled over into my sewing. And what I've seen while I'm doing this is that I'm a lot calmer, I'm a lot more focused. And actually, not only am I making less mistakes, but I'm getting more sewing done. So the next tip I have for you to pre-roll your bobbins. Nothing more frustrating than getting halfway through a project, running out of bobbin thread, and then you have to like stop sewing, thread more bobbins, and get going. It really, really holds us back. It gets frustrating, stresses me out if I get low on a bobbin. So what I've done pretty much from about year one or two in because I learned that lesson really quickly, was that I started rolling at least two, maybe three, depending on how big a project it was, bobbins before I started. And that way you never run out. On the downside, you end up with lots of filled bobbins that you don't end up using, especially if you abandon a project. But I think it's better to have the bobbins up front, ready to use, than to not have them and be set back. So the next tip for you is an absolute must, and that is to pre-wash your fabric. When I first started to sew, this is not something I could be bothered to do. Part of it was, it was a whole lot of effort. I had to wash the fabric, and then I had to dry it, and that would take days and days. And when the fabric arrived, I just wanted to get on and sew with it. But another part of it is that when the fabric arrives, it looks gorgeous. And I remember one of the first times that I pre-washed my fabric, it kind of ruined the fabric and it put me off pre-washing for a while. So I would say when you're pre-washing to always take care to read the care instructions and to make sure you are actually um, doing it on a low heat, but a wash, that you will wash the clothes in afterwards. Additional to that is that when a fabric is produced in a factory and then it's passed through to manufacturers and to shops, in the postage, eventually to you, it's going to have, it's going to be treated with chemicals, it's going to have all sorts of stuff on it. I dread to think if they tested it, the crap it would have on it. So by washing it before you use it, you're using your piece of fabric in the most hygienic way. I feel quite passionate about that one. The next tip is to always test your stitches before you start your project. So this is something I didn't do through pure laziness. Pure laziness. I was just excited to get on with the project. I wanted it done before I started and I was not gonna stop to practice anything. Well, more for me more for me because that was my downfall. There is nothing worse than starting to sew. You don't check your stitching, even when you're sewing with your actual fabric. And then you get to the end of the bit of stitching that you're doing and the stitching's either too tight, it's too loose, 
it's not bedded into the fabric. Sometimes it will sit on top of the fabric if the tension is wrong. When you're testing your stitches on a scrap bit of the fabric that you're going to use for your project, you are going to highlight any issues, any problems, any snagging, etc. The next tip I have for you to read your pattern instructions before you start sewing. I know what it's like, you get a pattern, you're really excited, you've got the most gorgeous fabric, you start going, so you read the first step, yep, do that. Read the second step, do that. And once we've got a few garments in our bag, you might even do what I did and don't read the instructions at all. Actually, there's a wealth of information in those instructions, even if you're not brand new to sewing. It can be quite good to look at those instructions, read them through, understand what is expected to make this garment, and you might find a different way of doing something that works better than what you've been doing in your other projects. And if you're brand new to sewing, which is who this video is aimed at, then definitely read through all the instructions because you are going to learn from them. If you're reading it through, you are gonna have time to digest what is expected before you start your project. And then when you're reading it again, stuff is just gonna click a little bit better. That's gonna result in a better end product. So the next tip is to learn to press, not iron your clothing or your fabric I should say. As we grew up we were taught to sew like this, glide the iron across the fabric but that can actually distort the fabric and damage it in some cases depending on how delicate the fabric is. If we go like this where we press the iron down, lift it, move it in the air, press it again, move it up, press it especially when it is fabric, that is a really good thing to do because you are not gonna distort your fabric. You do not want your fabric going off grain before you've even started sewing with it. There's time for ironing once a clothes made or not, depending whether you're an ironer or not. I'm not so much these days, as you can probably tell from this top. This next tip is a huge one, huge one. I cannot express how big this tip is and that is to take your time it is not a race the thing is when we start learning to sew we're so excited aren't we especially if we've made one garment and we're like hold the press stop the world i have just made clothes i am a genius well not so much but it is exciting, isn't it? It is so excited, so excited. I remember that excitement I had in the beginning. And the second I'd finished a garment, I was on to the next one. It was more of a success if I finished the garment more quickly. So if I could finish a garment in one or two hours, that dopamine hit was enormous. But if it took six, seven hours, dreading, God forbid it took a couple of days, then we've got a problem, haven't we? Going fast, number one, definitely doesn't make you a better sewer. You are gonna make more mistakes and you're not gonna be as accurate as you need to be and you are going to regret it. But number two, no one's giving out awards for being fast. It's silly, take your time, do a bit at a time. If you're tired or you're not at your optimum, step away from it and come back to it later. I am absolutely loving sharing these with you. So if you do love them too, leave me a comment, subscribe, do all the things, share the video out with anyone that you feel would benefit from it because that's gonna help me a lot. Also, did you know I've got a second channel called Life by Claire? and I've been daily vlogging over there. So come and check that out. Link will be in the description box. It's not about sewing, it is just about everything else really. So the next big life lesson in sewing that I learned was that when you're tracing out patterns, you need to transfer all of the markings. We get so frustrated when we can't just get on with the sewing and tracing is one of those things that we feel are holding us back. So when we're prepping a project, it can feel really frustrating that 
we're not just getting on with the sewing. We've got to cut the fabric. We've got to trace the patterns. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. We, got to, blah, blah. we never get round to actual sewing. The sewing is such a small part, especially in plus size sewing, that it can be really, really frustrating. So when we're tracing patterns, it can be really, really tempting to just trace the absolute essentials, which is the outline and darts or pleats or things like that. But actually there's so much information on that, not only in terms of transferring it to the pattern you're using now, but in the future, when I'm tracing off, I always write the name, the size I'm tracing, any adjustments I've made. I also trace off the notches, the markings, like if you get any little circles. Like when I was first sewing, I would just never ever trace any of this off. I really recommend that you trace everything you see on the pattern plus any additional information that you can put on because not only is that going to help you in your project now and it's going to help your accuracy notches for example are there for a reason so the next tip really leads on from that one and that is to sew notes so sew notes to take notes as you sew so this is really important for the reasons i just stated it was important to write down all your information on your pattern, on your traced pattern pieces. And that is because you do forget. You just, I don't know, I can only speak from personal experience, but I've got a brain like a sieve these days. And so I am never ever gonna remember what I did. For example, when I made this top, I then went on and made it in the Paisley one. And because I took notes, I also have video, but because I took notes, then I was able to make a better garment the next time round. All these things are in place to help you improve and get better with each project so you become happier and happier and get more proficient, more proficient, more quickly. We all know, and I've spoken at length about pressing when you are sewing. I don't necessarily believe you need to press every seam as you sew it but I believe in batch sewing, so do a series of stitches that don't cross over from each other, then press and then go back. But this next tip is related to that, and that is to set your seams after you've sewn them. So when you are batch pressing, or not batch pressing, even if you're doing it after every seam, you really need to set those seams and often we press it with not really knowing what we're doing. I certainly did for a long, long time. Um, but what we need to do to press those seams is to first press the seam closed and then to press it open. And that is going to set your seam and make it a lot stronger. This next one, guys, listen to me when I say this. Do not use your fabric scissors on paper. You will ruin them in no time at all. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but you need a number of scissors. Where I've mentioned scissors in my tool making videos, I've explained to you that you need different scissors for different things. And that is something that I would kind of get to grips with from a very early time. As soon as you know for sure sewing is for you, then I would invest in different scissors for different things. So you want a pair of all-purpose scissors that you're going to be able to cut paper. So if you're cutting your patterns out, that's what you're going to need those scissors for. But do not use them on fabric. So then you've got your fabric scissors and you don't use those. You don't cut paper with those because your scissors will become blunt very, very quickly. And true, you can resharpen them. Trust me, it's not worth the hassle to use your fabric scissors on paper. And then you also want some snips as well because when you're snipping the threads, you'll want some dedicated for that as well. That at its base level is all the scissors you need. There are other more specialist scissors that can help you, but that's for later on in your journey. That is to match your needle to your fabric. It can be really, really tempting to just leave the previous needle in because I'm not someone who changes my needles with every project. You don't need to do that. 
We've been here before, haven't we? On a couple of videos, in fact, you do not need, I don't care what anyone says, you do not need to change your needles with every project unless you're changing the type of project you're doing. If you're, if you're sewing the same thing over and over, no, it's such a waste. But what you do need to do is match your needle to your fabric. So if you are doing a medium weight quilting cotton, then you're going to need a needle for um, non-stretch fabrics in a, maybe a 70, maybe an 80. And that is going to work well for you. If you're sewing stretch jersey and it's a really lightweight, maybe a viscose, you're going to need a ballpoint needle and you're going to need it maybe a 60. You really, really must do it. If you don't and you just use one needle for everything, you are going to have tension problems. You are going to have skip stitches. You are going to have all sorts of problems. Change your needles if you need to. When I first started to sew, I learned by watching YouTube videos. Uh, by the likes of the late Melanie Ham, Crafty Gemini was another one. I can't think of the others. There were a few of them. I don't know if these people did this or not, but there certainly were some YouTubers that I would watch and they would sew over their pins. And then there were others that wouldn't and would say, such as I think Melanie Ham and Crafty Gemini, who would say absolutely do not sew over your pins. It just left me so confused. What was the right thing to do? So for many years, I went through sometimes sewing over them, sometimes not. Now, I didn't actually have many problems doing that. But as a more experienced sewer now, I understand the problems that can arise from that. So when you're sewing with your pins in place, it can be really tempting to leave them in place because what happens is you're gonna have a more accurate finish. And for the most part, when a needle goes down, it will go over the needle. The chances are it won't hit the needle, but there is a chance that it can. And if it does, it will break your knee. At best, it will break your needle. At worst, it could put your sewing machine out of alignment. So the next tip I have for you is one that I've only been doing recently. And that is when you're not using your sewing machine to turn it off. I personally have been known because I can't do a lot of sewing at one time, I will sew for a bit, leave my sewing machine on for three days, come back to it and carry on. That's really, really bad practice. While that's not necessarily going to affect your sewing directly, what it is going to do, it's going to be a safety issue if you've got other people living in your home, especially if you've got young people in your home. I don't, so that's not an issue for me. But if you do, that could be a real safety issue because young people are really inquisitive. Number two, you're going to use up the bulbs in your machine and they will need changing a lot quicker. Number three, waste your electricity. I mean, it's not my strongest point to share with you, but it is one that I think is really good practice in order to be a good sewist and seamstress. Because if you're turning your sewing machine off, you're going to turn your serger off as well. And that's probably more dangerous than your sewing machine. I actually once sewed through my finger. That is every seamstress's worst nightmare, isn't it? I was sewing along, I wasn't looking, and then I just... Um, I felt something go through my finger and I was like, I wasn't looking at it. I was looking at the TV behind me. Grave error. This was about five years ago. So about halfway through my sewing journey, thinking I was feeling fairly confident. I wasn't looking, watching what I was doing. I was, uh, my attention was diverted by something on the TV. I'm there and I'm thinking, I'm sort of moving my finger a little bit under sewing machine and it, I couldn't move it and I'm thinking shit I've got a needle through my finger I mean it didn't hurt as much as you would imagine it does um, and I looked down and sure enough it was right through my nail and the needle had come out the other side it was grim it was grim I had to go to hospital and they had to pull it out which was even grimmer 
I did do a video on it. it was I think it was the second ever video but it's now the oldest video on my channel so you'll find it by going to oldest where I talk to you after I get out of the hospital so check that video out and I will catch you in the very next one thank you for being here I really appreciate you bye for now